about Jesus. Oh Lord.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. We want to thank our members who have been so faithful. in your tithing, so faithful in your giving. There's no way that your church could remain strong and be able make such wonderful differences in the lives of so many people. Were it not for you and your faithfulness in the area of your tithes and your offerings. Yet, we still need others who have not come on board, who have not yet stepped out on faith enough to become a tither. We need you to do it. Not because pastor said it, but because the Bible says it. My brothers and sisters, the Bible is in no ways short or limited when it comes to reports on how the master stepped in to the midst of circumstances that were bleak and severe and changed the outcome. In both the Old and New Testaments, we find report after report of the Lord intervening and the Lord changing outcomes. All oh, brothers and sisters, Scripture informs us in a powerful way 
as I hurried this morning, that Jesus had risen from the dead. This report comes to us in the post-resurrection period, shortly after our Lord's resurrection. Scripture tells us in St. John chapter 20 of two previous occasions when Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples. When Jesus had showed himself to his disciples that he was no longer dead, but that he had risen, as he said. All oh, brothers and sisters, the women were the first to see him. The women were the first. Uh, to see from their own personal encounter that Jesus was a risen Savior. And the record tells us that in St. John chapter 20, Jesus had showed himself, had revealed himself on two distinct occasions to his disciples. Disciples who had earlier been gripped with doubt. For they had seen the magnitude of his suffering. And they were aware of the master's death. And when they heard from the women that the Lord had rose from the dead, some of them were gripped with unbelief. But in St. John chapter 20, Jesus has revealed himself on two prior occasions. And now, my brothers and sisters, the record tells us that our master has now chosen to show himself to disciples who had gone fishing. He wanted them to know again that he was alive and that he was well. Or oh, according to the word, the master appeared on an occasion that is worthy of being mentioned. For to appreciate it, you need to understand that Peter had earlier in St. John chapter 21 made this declaration. Peter said, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. And according to scripture, there were others of the disciples who said, we're going with you. We're going also. And the report is that they went out. And according to scripture, they had engaged in the business of fishing. And they had fished all night long and the report is that despite their diligent efforts and despite their long-term efforts they had caught nothing somebody knows the story they had caught nothing I think I need to tell you uh, that uh, these men Many of them were expert fishermen. A number of them, just like Peter, had at one time made their living 
out on the sea fishing. And they knew with great skill how to fish. And they knew, my brothers and sisters, how to be successful in the business of fishing. But the report is, despite their expertise, despite their know-how, despite their skill, despite their ability, a night of fishing had profited them nothing. Can I get a witness? It was a night of fruitless labor. It was a night of fruitless toil. All night engaged in something uh, that had proven to be of no benefit. All night engaged in fishing and had no fish to show for it. Somebody knows the story. Oh, brothers and sisters, I cannot come down too harshly on Peter and the other fellows. For I know something about being engaged in activities that brought nothing. I know about being engaged in activities uh, that proved to be of no benefit. And I believe that I'm in the right crowd because I believe everybody in here has at some points and times engaged in activities that benefited you nothing. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. All oh, brothers and sisters engaged in fruitless activity, engaged in activity that brought no benefits, engaged in activity, my brothers and sisters, uh, that brought us no good for our labor, that brought us absolutely nothing. Peter and the others had been actively engaged and involved and all to appreciate it you need some degree of imagination to see them involved and I submit to you that they went out there and boarded the boat they boarded the ship with all expectations of catching some fish. No, oh, brothers and sisters, I'm sure the first hour or so that proved to be fruitless, they thought little or nothing of it because they were still content to keep on fishing. And you know, every good fisherman needs that thing called patience. <laughs> Impatient people won't make good fishermen. Can I get a witness? It takes patience. It takes patience. And all, brothers and sisters, they would cast their net with all hopes and expectations of enclosing a number of fish only to draw the net in and find that their net was empty. Mm. Mm. I should have entitled this sermon, Empty Nets. <laughs> empty Nets. Oh, brothers and sisters, hour after hour, the net came back empty. And all scripture tells us they had been engaged in it all night and caught absolutely nothing. Oh, I submit to you that it's important that we give notice to our activities, 
to see whether we are engaged or involved in an activity that is bringing no benefit. Are we spending time with something that is proving to be fruitless? Can I get a witness? Oh yes, oh yes, all night and had caught nothing. And according to scripture, they continued to fish, hoping that with each cast of the net, they would enclose some fish, only to end up with nothing. Oh, it brings me to my first point as we hurry on in preparation for communion, and that is number one, the failure of human efforts apart from divine help. The failure of human efforts apart from divine help. Our human efforts, even the best of our human efforts, will end in failure without help from the Lord. Can I get a witness? Divine help is so crucial to our success. At all, their human efforts had ended in failure. And I wondered about it. I wondered about it. Why had they fished all night and caught nothing? But all brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit told me, well, one reason was they were out there without any instructions from the Lord. The Lord didn't tell them to go out there. They took it upon themselves. And be careful what we take upon ourselves minus any instruction or any direction from the Lord. The record tells us they had been out there all night and caught nothing. But they had been fishing all night without any help from the master. And according to the report, night gave way to early morning and still nothing. Oh, brothers and sisters, I submit to you uh, that uh, some of them were very possibly overwhelmed with frustration. And oh, we know Peter was given to say some choice words <laughs> on occasions. They were out there fishing and all night and had caught nothing. And I don't know how they expressed their frustration. But according to scripture, there was a fella standing on the shore and they could not recognize who he was. Pray with me, somebody. They couldn't recognize who he was. But scripture tells us who he was. It was Jesus. Jesus standing on the shore. Jesus, in his resurrected form, standing on the shore, and Jesus hit them with a question. Jesus hit them with an inquiry. Children, have you any meat? And all brothers and sisters, any time the Lord asks us a question, it's not because he doesn't already know the answer. Oh, brothers and sisters, the Lord sometimes asks us questions to cause us to examine ourselves, to engage in personal examination. And the record said they responded by saying no. 
No. No. Oh, you know I thought about it. Brothers and sisters, it does not matter how experienced we are. It does not matter how well-trained and educated we are. Your efforts are doomed for failure without the help of the Lord. Can I get a witness? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Yes. And when Jesus asked them this question, have you any me? He knew. He knew that they didn't have any fish. He knew that theirs had been a night of fruitless labor. And oh, brothers and sisters, I'm so glad that the master, even though they did not at that juncture recognize who he was, the master gave them a word. Can I get a witness? He gave them a word. It was a relevant word. It was a powerful word. Jesus spoke to them and said, cast your nets on the right side of the ship. Cast your net on the right side of the ship. And oh, I applaud the disciples for not debating with Jesus. They could have said, We've been out here all night and ain't caught nothing. We've been casting the net on every side of the ship. And our nets have come back empty. But the word tells us, without argument, without debate, they did what the master instructed them to do. And that is to their credit. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, they heard his instructions and they obeyed his instructions. Can I get a witness? And oh, I think I need to tell you that the record tells us that the net enclosed a great multitude of fish. Can I get a witness? So many fish ended up in the net until they had difficulty trying to pull the net in. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, oh, you need to realize that if we obey the Lord, he will bless us with blessings pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. It brings me to my second point as I hurry on in preparation for communion, and that is number two, the importance of hearing and obeying the word of the Lord. The importance of hearing and obeying the word of the Lord. Can I go a little further? And this is not intended uh, to intimidate anybody. It's only intended to tell the truth. Word goes out every Sunday. People hear it. But the question is, do they obey? Talk back to me, somebody. The Bible declares that it is not enough for us to only hear the word, but we must be doers also. Can I get a witness? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. For the record tells us that they not only heard the word, but they obeyed. And let me tell you something. We ought to come to church To receive a word. Pray with me somebody. Amen. 
with all the hell and high water that we have to deal with during the course of a week between Sundays when I get through going through the distress, the trials and the tribulations that I have to endure during the course of the week listen, I come to church and I don't come to play I come to church and I don't come to see who's sitting with who and who's got on what I come to church because I need a word I need word folk to talk back to me I need a word I need a word I need a rhema word I need a word that addresses my circumstances that addresses my situation and that helps me to realize that the Lord can make my situation better oh yes oh yes Beulah, I need you to help me with this sermon. I need you to lean over and tell somebody beside you. Tell them, I'm here for a word. Tell them, I'm glad to see you. But tell them, I came for more than that. I'm here for a word. I'm here for a word. And you know something? God doesn't just give us words for the mess we're dealing with right now. He knows what we're going to have to encounter tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. He knows this hell that we're going to run into before next week is over. And so he'll give us a word in advance to prepare us. For stuff that hasn't even hit us yet. Oh, brothers and sisters, the record tells us they not only heard but they obey. And you know obedience is better than sacrifice. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, because they obeyed, they enclosed a multitude of fish and struggled to pull the net in. Can I get a witness? Oh. Mm. The Lord just dropped something in my spirit. He told me to tell somebody. If you just obey his word. He's going to put so much in your net. Until you're going to struggle to pull it in. Is there anybody in here who wants some of those kind of blessings? Blessings that are so tremendous. Blessings that are so great. Until it's hard for you to pull it in. Oh, brothers and sisters, but I must not hold you. I've got to leave you. The record tells us they enclosed this great multitude of fish. And it is then that John, the beloved disciple, recognized who it was. 
Can I get a witness? John. John declared, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. No, I know. That's Jesus. You know, there are always some folk who can recognize Jesus faster than other folk. John shouted out, that's Jesus. And oh, they made their way to the shore to where Jesus was. Mm. Oh, brothers and sisters, oh, when you make it to where Jesus is, oh, it's a blessing all by itself. Can I get a witness? They made it to the shore. And scripture tells us Jesus already had some food already cooked. Jesus already had some fish prepared. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, has he ever prepared some blessings for you? Blessings that you didn't even expect. Has he ever prepared some blessings for you? Blessings that you didn't even know were going to come. Oh, the Lord told me to tell somebody. He's got some blessings ready for you. You don't know it yet, but he's already been preparing it. And it's just a matter of time before you make it to where the blessings are. Can I get a witness? The word declared Jesus had been cooking. He had a meal prepared for the disciples. And all brothers and sisters, scripture tells us that uh, the disciples realized something that I have come to realize and that many of you have come to be aware of. And that brings me to my third point as I prepare to bring this to closure. And that is number three, when the situation seems hopeless, the Lord can still change the outcome. The Lord wanted me to hurry up and get here to tell somebody who's dealing with a situation that right now seems hopeless. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. The situation right now may seem hopeless, but the Lord can still change the outcome but you got to believe you got to have faith that no matter how bad my situation is it's still just right for the master to change the outcome is there anybody here who knows that the Lord is an outcome changer oh y'all Let me, let me, let me ask that again. Is there anybody here who knows for yourself, who don't even have to ask nobody else? You've lived long enough to realize it for yourself that the Lord is an outcome changer. He can change the outcome. Oh, brothers and sisters, he can turn any situation around. And oh, when you live long enough to know it for yourself, 
you're able to declare with power the Lord can change the outcome can I get a witness and all I thought about it if you don't believe he can change the outcome go into the Old Testament go into the Old Testament the record tells us that they threw three fellows Meshach, Shedrach, and Abednego into a fiery furnace. Shut the door with the furnace heated seven times hotter than its normal temperature. Closed the door on the boys and all night long they were in the fiery furnace. But what they didn't know was that Meshach, Shedrach, and Abednego served a God who was able to change outcomes. Can I get a witness? And the Bible says that early the next morning the king got up yes with his entourage and went down to the furnace and said they've been talking about their God being able and all oh, I'm going for myself to see just how able their God has been but all oh, when he got down and looked into the furnace the record tells us he was shocked and he was gripped with amazement and the king said wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute yes the three that you threw in are still alive they're walking around unharmed they're walking around unhurt they're walking around with everything well and the king said that's not the only issue he said I got another issue he said, uh, I thought we threw in three, but there's another fella in there with them. There's another fella walking around with them in the fiery furnace. And uh, the fourth man looks like uh, the son of God. Ain't God all right? Well, I've got to leave you here, but oh, I need to talk to somebody who can testify you've been in some bad situations yes but the reason you're still alive the reason you're still in your right mind is because the Lord changed the outcome and if you know for yourself that he changed your outcome if you know for yourself that he brought you through a situation that could have destroyed you just turn to somebody beside you turn to somebody beside you and shake their hand uh -huh. don't shake it like a dead fish but shake it yes like a child of God shake it with some power shake it with some spirit and look them in the face and tell them tell them uh, I don't know about you but I would have been gone dead and gone a long time ago but the Lord stepped in to my situation and he changed the outcome ain't God alright well I've got to leave you here I've got to leave you here. Oh, I got to leave you here. Good God Almighty, I got to leave you here. But if you know for yourself, He's changed some outcomes for you. Just turn to one more person and shake their hand and hold their hand and look them in the face and tell them these words you're looking at. 
a living miracle you're looking at a, a walking miracle so many times the Lord has showed up and turned my situation around so many times the Lord has showed up and changed my outcome ain't God all right oh yeah oh yes oh yeah if he's changed if he's changed if he's changed some of your outcomes in the past don't you know that he still got the power to change your outcome in the present and in the future can I get a witness now anybody can shout over past outcomes that the master changed but it takes faith to shout in advance when the Lord hasn't changed the outcome yet but you're trusting him and believe in him and your faith tells you that it's only a matter of time weeping me endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning oh lord oh somebody who's going through something right now will you just help me praise him help me praise him help me praise him in advance praise him in advance for the outcome that he's getting ready to change for the outcome that he's getting ready to change help me praise him oh lord oh lord I wonder when you open your mouth. I wonder when you say this. Devil, you've been busy. You've been causing trials and tribulation. But telling devil, that's all right. Because I just got a word. The Lord is getting ready to change the Lord is getting ready to change my outcome He's getting ready to change the outcome. Weeping may endure for a night, but when he changes the outcome, joy, joy, joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell somebody it won't be much longer. Tell them if you can just hold out until tomorrow. If you can just keep the faith through the night if you can just hold out until tomorrow 
everything, everything. Everything will be all right. Mm. The doors of the church are open. Somebody ought to come. Somebody ought to walk out. Somebody help me shout it. The law is going to change the outcome. The doors of the church are open. Somebody ought to come. to the outcome changer. Come to Jesus. There might be someone here who has not yet accepted Christ as your savior. Walk out, walk out, walk out, walk out, walk out. He's got so much in store for you. Walk out, walk out. He's gonna feel your neck. He's gonna feel your neck. It may be empty right now, but he's gonna feel your neck. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. There might be somebody else here who was once a part of the church, but somewhere, but you strayed away. You fell by the wayside. You lost contact with the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. He loves you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Come right on. Beulah, will you help me with this invitation? Will you turn to somebody beside you and just shake hands with them and tell them it's invitation time? And tell them if you need to go and respond to the invitation, tell them please don't let this opportunity pass you by. Tell them I'll gladly walk with you so you won't have to go by yourself. Give them a little tug and tell them come on. In the name of Jesus. There might be somebody else here who's already saved. But you've been praying for the Lord to guide you to a good Bible-based, spirit-filled church. Walk out. Walk out. You may be among those in the balcony. Come down either of these side stairwells or take the elevator down to this level. If you're on the floor level, there's an aisle that will bring you to this altar. Walk out. Hallelujah. And as the choir leads us in this invitational selection, walk on out. And if somebody asks you where you're going, tell them, I'm going to that man who can change the outcome. Is there another who will walk out? While, while you have time, you ought to come. Lord, touch, Lord, touch, Lord, touch. Lord, speak, Lord, speak. 
gone out and we rejoice for the response that is coming. 